I watch the sunlight shine through the clouds, warming the earth below. And at the midday, life seems to say, I feel. For you are always close to me, following all my ways. May I be always close to you, following all your ways. Good afternoon, everyone. It was working earlier. Anyway, I'm not known for my delicate tones, so uh, everybody hear me in the back? Yeah. Welcome along to Mass, uh, this funeral Mass which we offer for the happy repose of the soul of Kathleen, my aunt Kathleen, as a parish family on behalf of uh, Karen Tommy and all the prisoners here. Father Martin and myself uh, to express our prayers and condolences to you all, uh, especially to Kathleen's daughters Mary Ellen, Kathleen and Maggie, and to our sons Kev, Joe, Mick, Pat, uh, our daughters-in-law Rita, Heather, Noreen and Tracy, and to the, the grandchildren Jack, Brian, Claire, Jacqueline, Kieran, Lewis, Amy, Claire, Louise, and all the, the grandkids. And also to uh, our sister Margaret, my mother, uh, and to all the extended family in Ireland, England, Scotland, and America. Uh, due to COVID, of course, we can only have so many people here. Uh, so people are joining us from elsewhere. You're all most welcome. I'm sure our prayers are most appreciated by uh, all the immediate family. Whenever we gather for a funeral, I suppose we are tempted to be caught up in the whole sad side of death, but for us as Christians, we know that that's not the, the last thought that we have, but knowing that when we die, we go to be with God and all those who have gone before us in faith. So that's our prayer for Kathleen today, that she'll take her place among the blessed in heaven. We always begin any celebration by acknowledging our need for God's forgiveness in our lives. On our journey to God the Father's kingdom, we don't always live up to what God expects of us at times. And so we all need God's forgiveness and mercy in our own lives. And so we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I fail to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Kathleen, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Would you like to take a seat, please? And we'd ask Claire to come up and do the first reading. After the first reading, we'll sing a, a psalm which will be led by the cantor. A reading from the prof prophet Isaiah. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and rejoice that he saved us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St John. My dear people, let us love one another since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only son so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean, not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his son to be the sacrifice that takes away our sins. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening here these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people. And how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the woman had reported. But of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, He explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him 
to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our heart burn within us as he talked to us in the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. This afternoon, of course, as the family of Kathleen, we all arrive here with a tremendous sense of sadness, of grief, a tremendous sense of emptiness in our hearts. Why would we not when we've lost someone that has been such an important anchor in our life? As a mum, as a gran, as a mother-in-law, as a sister, as an aunt, as a friend to so many and everyone that she met. So of course it's only natural that we are sad. But the readings that we have heard this afternoon, the readings chosen for Kathleen's funeral mass, are readings which give us hope. Our first reading talks of a heavenly banquet being prepared. A heavenly banquet banquet indicating that this life on earth is not the end. That heavenly banquet that we are all invited to. Our gospel gives us words of hope when everything seems hopeless. Gospel gives us words of comfort when we seem to be drowning in feelings of sadness, feelings of emptiness, feelings of fear. What am I going to do next without our loved one in our lives? In the gospel that we have just listened to, we hear Jesus accompanies them. Jesus walks beside his two disciples. Who are going to Emmaus, we're told. Remember Jerusalem, Jesus has been crucified and put to death. And the fact that the disciples are walking to Emmaus miles away tells us something of what's going on in their hearts and their lives. They're frightened. They too are experiencing so many questions in their grieving. Because the very person, the person of Jesus who gave them meaning, The person of Jesus who gave them purpose, the person of Jesus who gave them direction, has been crucified and put to death. So it's only natural that they are feeling an intense sense of sadness and grief. They themselves, like all the apostles and disciples, had sacrificed so much to follow him. They had been following him in his ministry, listening to his every word, listening to every teaching that he gave them, witnessing so many of his miracles, healing people physically and spiritually, and raising people from the dead. But he healed so many of their illnesses in their hearts and in their lives. Those disciples hung on his every word and deed. Their life evolved around the person of Jesus. So they don't know what's going to happen next. So then Jesus comes over to them and he walks with them. Jesus 
does not abandon us. Jesus does not leave us. He knows that we grieve terribly in our hearts and he walks beside each and every one of us. We're told that their eyes are kept from recognising him. Simply meaning that something was preventing them in their lives and in their hearts to recognise Jesus for who he was. Perhaps the eyes of their heart was blinded by grief and sadness. Sadness and emptiness. All the turmoil and the turbulence in our lives can prevent us from seeing Jesus in our lives each and every day. And Jesus allows them to tell their story. He allows them to go over what's happened. Because in our grieving, we need space and time. Jesus gave us that pattern to follow, to listen to those who are grieving, to listen to those who are sad and empty, because they need to offload what they're feeling. There's a little throwaway line that's given, and he was going as if to go on. Jesus didn't want to go on. He wanted them to invite him into their lives to have Eucharist with them. He wanted them to be part of everything that he did. He wanted to be close to them as their hearts are breaking. And we are told that they recognised him in the breaking of bread. Their hearts were burning. They realised who this supposed stranger was walking by their side. So as we gather here, to remember Aunt Kathleen. We too, like those disciples, have our own stories. And I'm sure as people have been gathering as much as they can during COVID, that many stories have been shared about Aunt Kathleen and how they related to Aunt Kathleen in their lives. I asked Maggie to write me a wee piece on her mum and I think I've got volume one here. So I think there are many more volumes to come. But there is so much that we could say about Aunt Catherine. Born on the 26th of November 1939 in Gertani in Quigley's Point. I'm told she would be 82 this year. Worked at MacIver's factory in Moville for three years at a tender age of between 14 and 17. Six sisters, mum and dad in a, a small prop, and we know what Gertani is like, I don't know how eight people lived in that house, but they did. They lived together and obviously had to go out to work and to bring money back to support the family. But your mum left Donegal for Glasgow in 1956, only at the age of 17. Like so many Irish boys and girls, having to emigrate their, from their home to come to Scotland to make a new life for themselves, to find employment and to make a completely new life for them and for their loved ones. She shared a room with Aunt Margaret in Paisley Road West. She also shared a room and a kitchen with Aunt Annie and Aunt Margaret in Brayhead Street. Then your mum, Aunt Sadie, Granny worked in the shirt factory as a machinist in Glasgow, again working hard to bring money home to support their families. And again, like so many of the Irish in Glasgow, they had to meet up. They had to find opportunities to come together. So they all went to what they knew best, the dancing. And no doubt they were dancing in Ireland, and here in Glasgow they met in the great dance halls of Glasgow, meeting up to support one another and to love one another, to share friendship. And that's where your mum and your dad met. And they were married on the 6th of May, 1961. I wonder how many couples from Ireland met their loved one, their other better half, other half, I wonder how many met them on the dance floors here in Glasgow. Lived in Langside Road, where they had five of their children. Then they moved to Ireland for a brief time to stay with Granny and Granda in Donegal. And here, of course, is where Pat was born, in Altna Galvin Hospital in Derry. Then they moved back to Glasgow to Easter House when the housing estates were being built around 1972. And of course, that's where the one and only last 
but not least, Maggie was born in 1974. I asked for some funny stories, and we all have our own funny stories of Aunt Kathleen. But as Aunt Kathleen got older, as we came to visit her, we knew that she was beginning to to get old, and old age doesn't come alone. Plenty of illnesses and sicknesses and dementia started to take hold. And of course, that affected Aunt Kathleen like it does many other people. But even in the midst of that suffering, there were so many funny stories. Maggie was telling that she always got mum to do her Elvis impersonations, and apparently she was an expert to which she would show the family and all the Cordia girls, who looked after her so brilliantly. And Maggie used to always kid her on that she had to go out and plough the fields as she was busy lying in bed with a hangover. Or she'd say to her in the evenings, will I get your packed lunch ready? and your hard hat with the light so you can go down the mines in the morning. And she would say, don't forget my flask. Of course, if you've ever been in Anne Catherine's house, she's a bigger telly than I've ever seen. And she's got as many channels, I think, as Sky could provide them for. But she loved, of course, watching her beloved Celtic. She loved to keep in touch with what Celtic were doing. And I'm told she always told Heather, Joe's wife, who was a Dundee United fan, I didn't know that, but I know now, that they were rubbish and she she should be supporting Celtic. And she always wanted to win the lottery. Like all of us, that elusive lottery win. None of us ever win it. But when Anne Catherine said she'd win it, she'd wanted to go to Paris, or something out of the thin air, she brought out Venezuela, where I don't know where she got that, but that came into the conversation. We all know she had a sweet tooth. Whenever you visited Aunt Kathleen, you had to bring her chocolates, cakes, but it always had to be secret because the girls now are not meant to know what she's eating and what she's not. So she would always hide it beside her on the cushion or whatever. I'm just thinking that that banquet in the heavenly kingdom, she'd be running around now looking for emeralds, chocolate, all this fancy food, give her an emerald toffee any day. I'm told she was watching Snooker with Pat one day and the great Irish women that she was watching between Dennis Taylor and Stephen Davis. And it was all a black ball finish that we were all in tenderhoots watching. And Dennis Taylor potted it, and I'm told Mum, Kathleen, jumped off the couch and said, Yes, Ireland, I can't stand that Steve Davis. She showed her colours in her own little way. All the description that you have of your mum here is of a lovely woman, a caring woman, a soft woman with the biggest heart that you could hope for. And of course she would, bringing up seven children, and a husband, her family, her, her nephews and nieces, an extended family. Of course she was a gentle woman who loved to see other people doing well. A great sense of humour, and as we see in so many pictures, that cheeky little smile that goes with it. Sort of devious little smile, cheeky laughing with you and laughing at you. She was so generous, would always put other people before her own needs. Proud of being Irish, but not bitter with it. Yesterday I was saying to Maggie, was International Women's Day. And you know, we think of all these women of power who have influenced our world. And usually it's to do with wealth or all sorts of power. Catholic churches get great women too all the great Catholic saints of our church, Catherine of Siena, Teresa of Lisieux, Teresa of Avila, Joan of Arc, Francis of Rome, whose feast is today, who was a mother who lost two children, who knows what it's like to be a mum. And of course, Our Lady Mary and her cousin Elizabeth, who were participants in the great story of our salvation, because they participated in bringing the Son of God into our world. What more could you hope for? God came down to this earth to be close to us. And Mary, two women, were the ones who were participating and instruments. In our gospel we're told it's women that run away and tell everyone that Jesus has risen. What more power could you have as a mum looking after all those kids? Power can come in love and compassion and caring for one another. 
And that sums up Aunt Kathleen to a T. A person of love, a person of care, a person of compassion, and an anchor in your life. And that's what we pray for today, that you will experience Jesus walking by your side, holding your hand. The hope that he gives you is not a hope that takes away sadness. It's not a hope that takes away difficulties or death, but it's a hope that takes us beyond death, takes us beyond our sadness, beyond our emptiness, because Jesus has promised to be with us to the end of time. Every time we come to Holy Communion, we let those disciples share in that breaking of bread. We receive Jesus and our hearts burn within us. We are receiving the Son of God who has conquered death once and for all. Just to finish, I came across this little poem the other day. It was for International Women's Day and all the rest of it, but it could be written for a mum. When God created mothers, he was working late on the sixth day. An angel came by and asked, why spend so much time on her? The Lord answered, have you seen all the specifications I have to meet to shape her? She must function in all kinds of situations. She must be able to embrace several kids at the same time. Have a hug that can heal anything from a bruised knee to a broken heart. She must do all this with only two hands. She cures herself when sick and can work 24 hours a day. The angel was impressed. Just two hands, he said. Impossible. And this is the standard model, he asked. The angel came closer and he touched the mother, the woman. But you have made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, said the Lord, but I have made her strong. You cannot imagine what she can endure and overcome. The angel said, can she think? And the Lord answered, not only can she think, but she can reason and negotiate. The angel touched her cheeks. Lord, it seems this creation is leaking. You have put too many burdens on her. The Lord said, she's not leaking. It is a tear. What's it for? asked the angel. The Lord said, tears are her way of expressing her grief, her doubts and her love, her loneliness, her suffering and her pride. And this made a big impression on the angel. Lord, you are a genius. You thought of everything. A mother is indeed marvellous. And the Lord said, indeed she is. She has strength that amazes she can handle trouble and carry heavy burdens. She holds happiness, love and opinions. She smiles when she feels like screaming. She sings when she feels like crying. And she cries when happy and laughs when afraid. Her love is unconditional. Her heart is broken when a relation or a friend dies, but she finds strength to get on with life. The angel asked, so is she a perfect being? And the Lord replied, no, she is not perfect. She has just one drawback. She often forgets what she is worth. So as your mum, I think Catherine, comes before God, as none of us are perfect, we are all sinners in the sight of God. As he opens her book of life, he will reward her for that love, that compassion, that generosity and that care that she has shown in her life. So although we're sad, although we're grieving, although we're very empty at this moment in time, open your hearts to the Lord. Let him come near you as your mum will be with him and with you. Always turn to Christ because it's with Christ that your mum is with. So by turning to him, you are close to to your mum. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
Please stand. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ the Son from the dead, and so with confidence we ask him to save all his people, both living and dead. We pray for Kathleen, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she will be now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our sister Kathleen, who during her life ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she will be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us in any way during our own lives. We remember in that prayer, Kevin, Kathleen's husband, who has died previously, and also her sisters, Rosie, Annie, Sadie and Mary, and our own parents, Joe and Ellen Allen. And for all who have had that positive influence on each one of us in life, that they too will have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they will see God one day face to face. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the family and friends of our sister Kathleen, that they will be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who himself wept at the death of his own friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. We remember all who are sick at this time, especially anyone whom we know is not well, anyone who's asked for our prayers all who are suffering from debilitating diseases of one kind or another, for all who are suffering from COVID throughout the world, and for all who are taking on the responsibility of looking after them. We make a special prayer for all who looked after Kathleen during her days of illness, all those in the care profession. We ask God's blessing on all who are sick that they may know his healing and consoling presence in their lives and that he blesses the work of all those who have the responsibility of looking after those who are ill. Lord, in your mercy. For all of us gathered here this morning and at home watching through the internet, that all of us will be gathered together again in God the Father's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We pause in silence with any of our own private prayers. We commend these and all our prayers to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer today for our departed sister, Kathleen, cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat.
sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Kathleen, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be her loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song we proclaim the mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of blessing, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, all our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember Kathleen, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have light souls and all define you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. So, at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we too dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And with your spirit.
sins of the whole world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Take a seat, please. If you're going to Holy Communion, if you come down via the centre, I presume, down by the sides and back by the centre. Okay, if you come down the sides and back by the centre. If you're not going to Holy Communion, if for any reason you can't go, if you want a blessing, cross your arms like that. I'll know you want a blessing and not Holy Communion, okay?
Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body and blood, food for the journey of life, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Kathleen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing for the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Kathleen, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, we console one another in our faith, the faith of Jesus Christ. We sprinkled the coffin again with holy water at this point. It's a reminder to us of the day we are baptised. For Christians, that's the most important day in your life when you become a member of God's family, the church. It's important being a part of a human family, yes, but uh, we always say it's more important being a part of God's family ultimately. And we also use the incense today. We use that as a mark of respect for the human remains that are here before us. Just as we offer up our prayers for Kathleen, we, uh, the smoke is a sign of that, our prayers rising to heaven on her behalf. And while that's taking place, uh, we sing our song of farewell.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Kathleen in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Kathleen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Kathleen and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before we finish off, eh, on behalf of all the immediate family, the girls and boys, to say thanks to everybody for coming out today, showing your support to them and offering your prayers for Kathleen. Uh, thanks to Father Martin, uh, Andy, our sacristan server. Uh, to the musicians, it's uh, when, strange when you show up in a place and you meet people you, you knew from 30 odd years ago. I haven't seen Vinny in a long time, but uh, I met him over 30 years ago. I didn't realise he was a talented guy like myself. Uh, and also to the, the singer, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. What's your name? Teresa, thanks to Teresa, I'm sure on behalf of yourselves you'd like to thank them. In peace, let us now take Kathleen to her final place of rest. Kathleen, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. If we join in our final hymn.